Something that I've wanted to do with this channel for a very long time is interview people about PCs and then run some benchmarks on whatever PC that they are currently using. Think of it like Top Gear's star in a reasonably priced car, but for PCs. So today I'm gonna drive up to Gainesville, which is about two hours away, to talk to my dad about his history with PCs, his businesses, his current computer, and then all of the computers that he uses to run his business. So go ahead and stick around for the interview, and then after that we'll go ahead and run some benchmarks. But without further ado, my dad. There's uh, formalness to any of this? No, I mean, I'm sure there's somebody in the intro of the video, they'll be like, what am I watching? So of course, the people who have been with us for a while probably know this space because we used to film here, the Sign Universe in Gainesville, Florida. The uh, Gainesville Studio. It was the Gainesville Studio, yeah. I mean, it's still a very nice place to film. I'm here with my dad, uh, the owner and uh, operator of the Sign Universe and he's not wearing a Sign Universe shirt. I'm wearing a rap spot, one of my brands. One of my very important brands. So tell me a little bit about the Sign Universe in that, uh, how did you end up with the Sign Universe? So I used to own a chain of donut shops and I bought a lot of signs. <laughs> and so I was hanging out at the Sign Guys place a lot and I was like, you know, this is kind of a pretty cool business. About, yeah. about what year was this? Oh, that was like 1992. Two. Okay, so long time ago. A lot of, a lot of years ago. Yeah, that's like like fifteen years ago, right? I don't know. It's like a long time ago. <laughs> so, and I was out of college, and and so I started. I bought a plotter back then. We cut vinyl, color vinyl. So how did you how did you work, run the plotter back then? Okay, that's a good question. We had, um, uh, you know, we had regular desktop computers, and since there's no color involved, it's just line art. You know, all you're doing is cutting out a line. So it looks like a, a CAD program absolutely. almost? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we used, we used CorelDRAW back then. Wow, Corel CorelDRAW's draw, been around that long. Yeah, CorelDRAW has been around that long. And it's a very, it was a very good program then. I've always liked it. And then it would have a bridge that was kind of like a printer driver. Did you, you have like an add-on card for your PC to plug it into the printer? Back then we had SCSI the cards. Plotter. Yeah, yeah, they had SCSI, Sc card, SCSI cards. I, yeah. I heard of those. I mean, it was like, you know. Was it like a ribbon cable coming out of it? Yeah, but it was like six inches by one inch, <laughs> right? I mean, this thing was monstrous. <laughs> and I, I, mean, I mean, what did it, like 700 wires coming through? Like, and they probably only assigned any information going through two of those wires. It's kind of like <laughs> USB now. It's like eight <laughs> wires in there, and they're still only sending information through one of them. So. But yeah, SCSI cards, and then and that would plug into the back of like this plotter, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, and and I mean you know if you think about it, cutting things on a plotter is third grade math, right? Mm -hmm. The Cartesian coordinate system, you know, you got x and y, and the, the plots lines across that. And, and there's just a little bit of z. And well, z is up or down, on or off. Z is very important now, but back then it was on or off. It's kind of like a plasma cutter. You know, Z is, you know, you're cutting through the steel or aluminum or whatever. And, or you're not. <laughs> or you're not. You know, Z is easy, on or off. So, but, you know, then it's plotting, you know, X1, Y1 to X1, Y2 to X1, Y3 to X1, Y4. You know, it's just moving through it. So from a, you know, so basically, you know, you, any CAD program, a CAD program, you know, just has the lines. It's all vectored. And you scale it up, the bigger it gets, the, you know, it doesn't lose any resolution or anything. So we were just cutting out stuff back then. And the programs are pretty simple. And if you think about it, it's all numerics that are probably from a processing side very, very quick. It wasn't until we got into desktop publishing. And, and by, by the way, desktop publishing in, in the late 80s and early 90s was about when PageMaker and Quark and Quark Express and all that start, stuff started coming out and people were actually like laying out pages. Before that we were like, you would print out a whole bunch of stuff and then you'd cut it out and paste it on a thing, take a picture of it and that's how it would go to the print. Now you've got this computer screen you know, on the Mac, you've got Quark Express and you're actually pulling this over here and whatever that page looks like when you're done is what would print out. Okay, so, okay, yeah. So when you get into the 90s, you're starting to see the computers and all of the, um, you know, all of the printing equipment starts coming out for signage. Mm -hmm. And prior to, prior to cutting vinyl, I knew guys who had, uh, you know, paintbrushes. Literally, you know, we're competing on the vinyl side with the guy that has a can of paint and a paintbrush. And just making a sign. And he's just making a sign. And, and I knew so these really guys. you've really been around with vinyl since, like, the very beginning of vinyl. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there might have been stuff before that, but the materials either didn't exist or the computers weren't fast yeah. enough or something. So you'd, I, I talked to this... Uh, the, this artist once, you know, this sign artist, and I said to him, I said, um, I said, he goes, I can paint it faster than you can cut it. 
and I'm cut it, weed it, mask it, put it on the thing. And I'm like, yeah, maybe on the first one. I said, but I'll get you by the fifth one. I mean, you'll be dead and I'll be just, the machine just running. And, and the thing is, I don't have any of that artistic skill. I had a lot of technical skill, so I could, you know, I could make it. But I didn't have the artistic skill to make, you know, all that beautiful yeah, stuff. Like, so, yeah. the, so the computer was a technology equalizer for the artist. For, for signage, like, yeah. Yeah. So for so, me, it was like, it was perfect. So what, what? So I got into it because sign, the sign universe is open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So when I was in the hospitality industry, if you work in a restaurant, you, you know, you call up one day and you go, hey, I want to work in a restaurant. They, they go, oh, great, sucker. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're sitting there in the restaurant, and, and if you're, you're a good server, you're a good cook, you're a good manager, what, how, do they been, how, did, how, do they, how do they reward you? Uh, with more work. So they go, they go, you're good. You know when we're busy is on, on nights. So you're going to work nights. And you're like, oh, I'd like to be home with my family. No, you're a good, you're good, you're a good your family server. doesn't need you. You're a good server. You should, you should get your life screwed. Okay, okay. So then they go, go guess what? It's, it's Easter. You know? It's like, you're a good server. We're putting you on Easter. And they're like, I'd really like to spend that so, with my so family. So you, you were a server prior to, to making signs? No, but I worked in the hospitality oh, industry. Okay. Okay. You know, I, worked, I, had, I, ran, I was a general manager of a uh, country club. Yeah. And the country club is always busiest when, yeah. peop, when normal people are off work. Yeah, so when you, uh, you, when you would like to be off work, when you, you definitely cannot be off and work. And by the way, that's every restaurant. That's every, you know, uh, hey, yeah. venue. Right? Yeah, that's unfortunate. So when you're in that world, you get screwed if you're good. I say that about myself with, uh, with automotive stuff is, is my biggest regret of my, my professional career is being as good as I am at it because it's like, oh, well, we're not going to give you the easy thing to do. We're going to give you the hard thing to do. Right. And then... And you're still getting paid the same either way. Yeah, right? like you get a lot relatively. Of yeah, it's, it's all just hours. So just anyway, so I was looking across the spectrum of things that I could do, and I'd had this interest before, and I'd made signs before. So, you know, I'm looking at it, and it's a business-to-business -business kind of business. So first, so you first worked at this, this small shop that, that made signs, or it was a big shop or whatever, and then you had another sign shop after that? So originally, I would go to this guy's shop, and mm -hmm. he was a one-man show, and I needed stuff, and he'd be like, well, it's going to be two weeks, and I well, what if I help you? And he's like, okay, well, we'll do it today. <laughs> so he was a one-man, so then I bought plotters and stuff and did it out of the garage, mm -hmm. and just for myself, you know, for the, for the donut shops. And then I was like, well, you know, if I can do this for myself, I can do it for other people. So Because you needed all the, uh, all the menu stuff? Yeah, exactly. It's funny because that menu and it changes. That menu is still there, and then just they just change the the lettering on it. Uh, you know, it, on it. I have this conversation with a customer almost every day. I sell signs that are menu boards that are signs. I do not sell LED menu boards, and every single restaurant, I tell them, do not buy those from me. Buy a monitor, and have your menu board on the monitor. Yeah, or know. TV or anything, yeah. Right, right. TVs now are monitors, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're just big, beautiful thing. And, and, and when, you, when you're out of ketchup, put it on the, you know, take it off the menu. When you're out of, um, you know, if you're at McDonald's and you're out of bacon, take all the stuff with bacon That's off That's when you take it. it off the menu, you get the order, and you're like, man, nobody's ordering the bacon. Right. Well, <laughs> it's just not you, on the menu. You know, if you, if you mark it in the POS, and the POS is, is also on the website menu board, and the menu board that's on the website is also the one up here, when you have a change, it'll, it'll affect all, it'll, you know, the drive-through. Nobody will see it on the drive-through one, or it'll, you know, or you, or you big, put a big X through it. I mean, you actually see that now at McDonald's. They'll have, like, um, out that some they have some little nomenclature for out you know but when I do a menu board for the people today and by the way supply chain is really screwed up today so there's a lot of people who can't get supplies it's not about bad management it's just the world it's is crazy yeah no it's just yeah it's the world crazy well so so they'll be out of something and they won't be able to communicate that to their customer or but but the other thing is everything's getting more expensive really quickly I'll get the call hey I need to raise prices on my menu boards and I'm like if you had done it the way I told you. You wouldn't be calling me. Now, I know that's bad for my business, but I want to do what, the, what helps that customer. Yeah, you know? I mean, like, it's not like they're not going to buy a sign for something else. Right. I mean, there's still plenty of other opportunities. for. And well, ultimately, I'd like to get into that LED world and, you know, and basically um, have a, an, a, an API that taps into their uh, POS system. And so the manager on the back end says, we take this off, and it just kind of deletes out on all the different platforms. But back to, you know, the signs, yeah. I was doing so, the menu boards and all that kind of stuff. And I was looking for a business that was more business to business, nine to five. And, and this kind of, even though I work a lot of nights and I work a lot of weekends and I work a lot of stuff, 
we're not open on the weekends, and that's good. We're not open on holidays. And yeah, that's yeah, it's the, it's the I balance. don't have to be type thing. Yeah. Right. I choose to be in order to have good service sometimes when we're busy, but I don't have to be. So I'm just kind of rewinding a bit. So what would you say is the first PC that you ever bought or put together? Or at least whatever, like what was the first one that you think you had back in like the 80s? Like what, what, what was the first computer oh. experience that you had? First computer experience, I got a... TI 994A Texas so that, Instruments. Yeah, Texas Instruments. And it had a cartridge, mm -hmm. you know. And then I got, I, that was um, 16K memory. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> By the way, at that point, the only other real options were the, the Tandy Radio Shack, the TRS 80s. That was mm -hmm. kind of like the, like the thing you could get if you wanted to get something. And who knows why we bought so, them? I mean, they were so terrible. What would you do with that? Games. So, so you had game. What, what game can you remember? Um, I had this have Oregon Trail. <laughs> That's what comes to mind when I think of old old nah, text based games. It was a text based I, game, right? No, no. I had um, there was a video game, mm -hmm. and like this this ship would go up and down, and you'd shoot things. Mm. And I don't even remember what it was called, but it was oh. fun. And and I did a lot of like programming. I was going to catalog all kinds of stuff and make databases. Mm. Okay, so I would run these. Um, if then, kind of basic Ooh, language. Really basic programming. Well, basic language, you know, you know, and it was like uh, you hit, you know, you run, and it would, and and we saved them on cassette tapes. Hmm. And so, if you listen to the cassette tape, what you could easily do, it, you you would plug it into the side of a regular cassette tape player, you hmm. know, one of these ones that are, you know, the normal. Yeah. You'd plug it into the uh, the jack, mm -hmm. and then that R, uh, uh, what is it, uh, whatever that cable is, mm -hmm. would plug into the side of the computer, and but if you listen to it, like on the regular speaker, it'd be like, <laughs> you know, just like the dial-up was, right? <laughs> Make dial-up noises. And, um, but it was like really, really, it took a long time. And of course, you know, half the time it would just error out because it didn't work. And then, um, and then from the TS, I mean, the, uh, uh, the, the TI-994A, I got a Commodore 64. Ooh, 64K you had... of memory. Ooh. You had, was, a, you had a genuine Commodore 64. Oh, I had a beautiful Commodore 64. It was, and by the way, that was like the upgrade of the century. I mean, this had cartridges, and you could buy a hard drive. A one meg hard drive, though, was Ooh. like was like a thousand dollars. Like the computer itself was hundreds of dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. And in 1982 terms or 84 or whatever it came yeah. out, whenever we got it, I got it at I got it at Toys R Us. Wow. Really? Ain't that crazy to think about? Toys R Us is gone now, too. But uh, so we got it at Toys R Us for like, I don't know, like $300. $300 back then was probably like $3,000 today. I mean, maybe more. I don't know. I've done the conversion. I think, I think 80s money was, was twice as much as it is now. Okay. Or it was, now it seemed, twice as much. And like I said, you did, it, didn't, it didn't come with um, any storage device. You had to get all that extra. Um, yeah, you could buy a floppy disk drive. So, so you could buy a hard drive at some point. So, did you play games on that? Yeah, for and sure. And the games came on cartridges. On cartridges, that and you they could were buy fantastic. The yeah. I mean, even today. I mean, not 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 like you know, <laughs> you know the the graphics so much, but I mean they were just fun. Yeah. I had um, and you could buy them on 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 a floppy drive also. Mm. So you had a floppy point. drive on it too. Yeah. No, not on it. It was an add-on. Oh, okay. You could get a floppy drive. Instead of having yeah. the Was it the really player. big floppy drives? Or was uh, it, was no, it? they were the five and a quarter. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So they were kind of, they weren't the, the, the later page. on three and a, yeah. a five and a half and then three and a quarter. I don't remember what yeah. then. So, so yeah, you know, you, you got this Commodore 64 and, and it, it was very, very simple. It had a keyboard built into it and everything. <laughs> but But then I got my first... Real computer. Ooh. Okay. Now, now, what are we talking? Do you remember any of the actual hardware with it? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a, let's see, it was about 1986. Mm -hmm. I got a, what was, what we called IBM compatibles at the time. So IBM had come out with, and, and you know, IBM kind of came out with this stuff and you could buy hard drives and you could buy uh, all the components. You could buy the processor and uh, all these different things, and you can buy all these pieces. And then they put it all together for you. And, and well, and like I said, IBM kind of stuff, compatible stuff. You could buy all the components from anybody. I mean, there, there was like catalogs you would buy at the store, and you'd for, go through and you could IBM stuff. Yeah. IBM stuff, and then or you could buy Apple, and Apple was like a box, and everything was exactly the way it was going to be. You know, and you had it to was, get it, every single. And they had no fans. 
Right. Well, and, and Apple was going to make sure that you bought everything from them. It was kind of like the... I'd like they still do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Wow, <laughs> some things never change. Well, and, and they were like, and so like, you know, being a person who didn't have a lot of money or whatever, it's like, well, I don't want to buy from a company that holds you hostage. I'm going to buy from this place where I could buy this from one company, that from another company, that from another company, and, you know, and, and I, I can search around for the best price of the keyboard, for example, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I can, and uh, so we used to buy a lot of you know, catalogs at the store that had like, you know, an inch worth of pages of ads and stuff. But anyway, so I bought this one. It's mind-boggling to think that there was just that many things back then that you could choose between. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it, it was moving fast. Like, you buy a computer on the bottom of this curve, and by the time you got it home, they'd improved. I mean, a lot. <laughs> I mean, so, so I bought this computer. It was, um, it was a store at, in town that, that assembled pieces. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I remember about it, 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 had, it had 128K. Mm -hmm. So it was double my 64, Commodore 64. But the really interesting thing is it had a hard drive. And hard drives started off about a meg, but then they became 10 meg. Well, I had a 40 meg hard drive. Ooh, I bet you thought you could never fill that up. And I was like, you never fill this thing up. 40 meg? I mean, you know, like, like what could we store on it? The universe? I mean, <laughs> like, it's like, no problem. But, for, but what it was, it was a 20 meg hard drive, OK? It was a 20 meg hard drive that this company had figured out how to format it as a 40 meg hard drive. Mm. So really sketchy. I mean, really unstable. The question is, was not back then, you know, is your hard drive going to fail? The question is, when is your hard drive going to fail? And it was so sketchy. I mean, you know, you'd be typing along black, uh, green screen, or <laughs> blue screen of death, I guess, you know, whatever. It would come up, and you were like, uh, you know, the hard drive's fried. It was great, but it, you know, it was so much better than anybody else at school had because I had a 40 meg hard drive. <laughs> and then moving on from that, um, I mean, did you remember what kind of processor was in that? Remember anything, uh, any of those kinds of specifications? So back then, it was like, uh, I want to say around the time of an 8086 or something like that. Oh, that sounds, that, yeah, that sounds about right. Something like that. So, so here's something, here's a cool fact for you as far as like, you know, how time progresses. So like the 8086 was, you know, a very popular Intel processor. And then the, the processor that's in your computer right now, there was a special edition version of it. Like there was a, there was a, it was the revolutionary, like we have a five gigahertz processor and they named it the 8086K. Really? Because there's a 8700K in your current PC. So it's a cool right. thing to think about. Right. So like back then, I, I, there was some time, and, and there was, you know, there was a time when it went from the 8086 to the 8186 to the 8286, and then I just started calling them 286, 386, 486, 586, 88. And it's like, you know. <laughs> it just got started. It starts getting really mind boggling. Well, you know, and like I said, that, there was that curve, and like every year something came out that was I mean, so much still, better. It's still kind of like that, but like it, I feel like the progression has slowed to where, you know, you get. 10%, right. 5%, right. you know, 2%. Oh, these things were like, every one of them was four times better than the previous yeah, one. Yeah. Everyone, everything that came out was so much better. And you know, you get to college, and we're doing now word processing. Uh, we're doing a lot of spreadsheets. I mean, that was kind of my thing was, um, I, I, had a, I was at a meeting the other day, and the girl goes, uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm really good at Excel. And I'm like, I was really good at Lotus 1, 2, 3. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> What's that? Let's just go ahead and move on to like uh, ASAP, like the uh, the the unfortunate business name that you had for your last sign shop. Absolute <laughs> signs and printing. And what does that mean? Absolute signs and printing. What does ASAP mean? As soon as possible. <laughs> and how do you think people understood that? That it would be done yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty unfortunate. Well, and you know, we probably turned jobs around pretty quickly, but it wasn't what their perception might have been. And then, uh, so, so what kind of computer did you have running that show, would you say? I would say that was probably in that 386 range. And I remember, so, so back then, we had cathode ray tube CRT monitors. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a monitor like, like this big became this big, became this big. You know, and they were... They were just getting heavier at that point. And they were so heavy. <laughs> I mean, like, like a monitor this big was like this deep. Right, and you would—it would take two people to carry it. And I remember one time I set one on my, um, on the platform you know holds the keyboard, and it ripped the keyboard platform off and goes to the ground and explodes. Right, <laughs> and I was like, 
well, I won't do that again. <laughs> but it was, but the the video uh, monitor, the video cards on those, you know, like 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 a character was like, you know, an inch by, and, you know, it was just terrible lines of drawings and stuff. So back then, a lot of the improvements were improvements in the LED screens and all that start stuff start coming. To help out. you actually be able to tell what you're making on the screen. Right. I mean, who knew? And but they were getting better and better and better and better too. You know, and then you're getting into video cards that were now not part of the, you know, not the motherboard. Motherboard, yeah. And you're starting to see video cards. VG, and, VGA cards, I think. Yeah. So, so there was, yeah. yeah. So there was like VGA, and then SVGA came out. The quality mm -hmm. was built into that nomenclature as well. You know, if you had an if you had an SVGA, the quality on the screen was going to be so much better than just regular VGA. So after, absolute, after, after absolute, absolute Science and Printing instead yeah. of ASAP, because yeah. that was a poorly named company. <laughs> but you know what? Back in then, I mean, just back up for one second. Yeah. Back in the day, you wanted to be... You wanted to have an A name, so you were right. first in the phone you book. You wanted to be first in the phone book. Like when you're in a town like, um, like Gainesville Denelan. or Denellen or wherever, right? You don't want to be, just in case you grow, you don't want to be Denellen Printing, yeah. Although there was a Donnell and Printing. You don't want to be I that. It's still there. Yeah, it might be. And you don't want to be that because let's say you grow to Ocala. Well, everybody in Ocala is like, well, well, are they too good for us? <laughs> Donnellan's 20 minutes away. Right. Right? We're, we're I don't some... want to be Donnell and air conditioning. You know, I mean, it's, it, so you tend to want to, in my mind, want to be like a little bit bigger than that. So Absolute Science and Printing was ASAP. I mean, for... that's why you went from Absolute Science and Printing to the, to the Science Universe. <laughs> so you're like, okay, we're going to sell signs on different planets now. Well, no, that was actually, we started off Engraving Universe. And why did you pick Engraving Universe? Well, first of all, we were doing engraving back then. Well, that would make sense, yeah, wouldn't it? And I was working out of a bedroom and a little section of the garage. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny to say that it was universe because it was like the opposite <laughs> of a universe yeah we were like as we small were, as you could get you were be a business yeah we it was so small in fact kind of prior to that all it was was an llc so i'm working out of the house and i've got this little corner and i thought that engraving universe you know we looked at like um engraving mart engraving all kinds of things you know like we for, were, for a, a website for, for name yeah and, and and by the way nowadays the first thing i do is go to a dot com naming company. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to name domain. Any of, a, don a domain naming company, right? Yeah. You know, and a registration company. I mean, there's you know so many. Everybody has their favorite. I'm, and I have a whole bunch of. I, 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 so the first thing you do is you go and see what's available, right? Mm -hmm. As a dot com. By the way, that's why I think Rapspot dot com was such a fortunate thing. I mean, it's two really common names yeah. that actually talk about what the business is. You know, we do vehicle wrap, so wrap spot. It's short, and it was available. I mean, easy money. Easy it was, it money. was an easy decision, which, which I stole the whole concept from another business that was in a completely different industry. That was a spot, and I liked how you know how on the maps you have that that kind of like uh, exclamation point looking thing, mm -hmm. that kind of, to me that all worked. I mean, I but it was available, and I was like, oh, this is this is like a sign from heaven, you know. But Engraving Universe started off in a little corner, and I thought it was really, really hysterical that it was this little Small thing. thing. And you're calling it the universe. You're calling it universe. All right, well, you know, thank you for, uh, Old white guy. for letting me uh, benchmark your PC. Thanks. Thank you for uh, rambling, I guess. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> if you like this video, like it, comment about, um, you know, whatever you learned or thought about, if you think it's interesting that we you know, have a, an old iBuy power that still works perfectly fine. Or if you think it's interesting that this genetics put out somebody with that much hair. Yeah, that, that, yeah, how do you keep the bald so, uh, so shiny? I shave every day. Well, thanks for watching. Get subscribed for future random interviews about PCs because I, I think it's interesting. So I hope you do too. I'll see you next time. So for the PC that runs the show, Again, it's an Intel i7-8700K running with 16GB of quad-channel RAM at 3000MHz along with an NVIDIA GTX 1060. Surprisingly enough, when I was booting into Windows, I noticed that XMP was not enabled, so I went ahead and enabled it for him. God only knows how long he didn't have that on for. <laughs> Overall, it scored great, boosting up to 4.7GHz on a single core, as it should, to allow for a respectable 1195 points on single core, and 8,646 multi-core in Cinebench R23.
For the PC as a whole, it scored just behind average for the build and Time Spy, while still being better than 29% of all Time Spy results. At three years old, this machine has well served its purpose and is still doing an amazing job. Yeah, so this PC is mainly used for uh, raster image processing. So like you send an image over to it and it processes it, does color correction before it sends it over to the printer so that the, uh, the printer gets the best image possible. It has a Ryzen 7 3700X and a 5700XT along with 16 gigabytes of RAM. A pretty small uh, 120 millimeter AIO, but it gets the job done. It looks really good. It's got a one terabyte Intel NVMe SSD, and I guess that's it. It really looks like, yeah, it does not have any other drive. So off the shelf pre-built. It looks good and it's been doing a great job for the past uh, almost a year now. So this PC is actually the funniest to me. It's the receptionist PC. It has an 8700K and a 1070 Ti. So it's gonna make you feel even worse if you're only rocking a 1060 right now and you're actually using it for gaming. <laughs> but it has worked perfectly for them. And honestly, you know, it looks really good. It probably has the least dust out of all these PCs, mainly because these fans in the front aren't actually running, but I'm sure they turn out at a certain temperature. Again, an iBuy Power PC, the running trend around here. So here's the kind of start of the show. This is the PC that really runs the business. It is a 8700K and a GTX 1060, along with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It is, again, an iBuy Power, and it is getting pretty dusty. So I'm really gonna have to come through here and clean up all these PCs for him because they are absolutely dusted up. It's funny, it has all the doors for the uh, CD drives, but it doesn't have any. This PC might look familiar to some of you guys. This is the PC that we cleaned up in the most satisfying PC cleaning ever video. It's back out here next to the CNC router as it's always been and it's just collecting more dust. I think it's dustier now than when we clean it up in the, uh, the video, but again, it's an iBuy power. It has a Ryzen 5 3600 along with a Radeon RX 590. Very, very, um, weird GPU because it came along kind of late. 16 gigabytes of RAM at, uh, I think it's 2400 megahertz. It's very simple, but I touched it and now it's clean in one spot. So, can you shut up for a second? <laughs> so this is the all-in-one they use for clocking in and out. Don't let the i7 sticker fool you. It's just a 7500U, which is like a two core, four thread laptop processor it, built into this all-in-one. It's kind of a weak gig, so they're kind of thinking about replacing this thing, but so far it's still working, so it hasn't died yet. So down here is the PC for the accounting and scheduling of jobs. It is also an i7 8700K along with a 1060 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Very running trend. It is also from iBuyPower, so they're just really powering this business. Down here we have one of the graphic design artist computers. It's a i5-6600K along with a 1060 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Man, they really know how to sell these things. And here we have the last but not least iBuyPower. It is also an i7-8700K along with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 1060. So kind of a running trend here, but they all work fantastic. So I hope you liked this quick little tour around the Cyan universe. I hope you enjoyed the interview that we had with my dad earlier. Clearly his business has nothing short of amazing PCs and I'm sure you're all fairly jealous of them. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.